How's it guys? Welcome back to my channel uh, and probably to the last video uh, on my channel for this year. Didn't expect to make another video for this year and make another Taylor Swift review for this year. I reviewed Lover when it came out last year. I reviewed The Surprise Folklore coming out a year, under a year after Lover and now under like, how long has it been like? Five months or something since Folklore came out, we have a surprise, technically third album evermore. I feel like with Taylor Swift and a lot of pop artists, they they release an album and then they have that era. You know, they kind of let it simmer for like a good few years. Like if I'm thinking like Lady Gaga or Katy Perry or Madonna or just like other Miley Cyrus, just other fam famous women in the game they always sort of leave it years between albums. Within a year, we've literally got three Taylor Swift records. Um, and I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining because all of these albums are fire. I like them all for different reasons. I definitely favor the vibes of Folklore and Evermore over Lover. And I am a, a grateful for new music. If anything, this year, uh, new music is something that I think we can all definitely appreciate. Um, so yeah, we have this surprise sister record uh, to Folklore. When I first heard that Taylor was dropping another surprise album, I was kind of like, the impact had kind of worn off from like the first surprise. So I wasn't as excited. You could tell from like the vibe and aesthetic of the album artwork and stuff like that, that it was gonna be a very similar vibe to Folklore. So I thought we were just gonna get a Folklore sequel, which is kind of what we did get but it is so much better than I thought it was gonna be. And dare I say even better than Folklore, in my opinion. I think Evermore is a testament to Taylor Swift's songwriting ability. Say what you want about her as a person or a performer or a singer and a vocalist. Her songwriting is really top notch. I'm just gonna go track by track through this record, talk about my favorite songs and my not so much favorite songs. Not so much favorite songs is now a a thing I said. Starting off with Willow, which is the first track on this record. I think this was a really nice way to introduce the album. I love the chorus. The more you say, the less I know. I really like that lyric a lot. It's one of my favorites on the album. And again, it's Taylor Swift making a great story, telling uh, a brilliant story, a thought out story in a three to four minute song in a three minutes and 34 seconds song. I think it's a really, really good way to introduce the album. It's kind of telling a story of someone who's in love with someone that maybe she shouldn't be, or maybe that isn't right. Um, trying to make things work, but it's just not really working. The next track on this record is Champagne Problems, which is again, a really good song. Um, the first two, I think the first two, three songs I absolutely love. I love Champagne Problems. It's a bit more slowed down compared to Willow. And it's kind of the flip side of Willow, almost from the perspective of the person who like isn't really into the relationship anymore. So much so um, that they decline their hand in marriage. Like it's it's just so savage. Like when you listen to the lyrics, one of my favorite lyrics that I wrote down for this was, you had a speech, you're speechless. I just really liked the idea that this guy or girl, um, depending on who you view as the narrator at this point, um, is almost building up this proposal. They've got all their family and all their friends around and it's gonna be like this great hurrah when she says yes. And then she says no. And it's just like the, the effect of that, you know, no one's cheering, you didn't make your speech, no one's celebrating um, with the fancy glass of wine that your sister bought. I just really like how um, unapologetically just sad it is for both parties. But it's kind of, yeah, it's telling a story of a situation that you just never dream yourself of being in, but in this situation, she puts herself there and I think it's fantastic. The next track is Tis the Damn Season. And actually this is one that I didn't particularly enjoy on this record. It is a skippable song for me. Um, in the sound already, it's, it's kind of more forgettable. If you place this song on any other Taylor Swift record pre-lover, I think it would work better. Here on Evermore, when we've already had such an influx of indie folk Taylor Swift, this one just kind of gets lost for me. Tolerate It is the next song and I I really like Tolerate It. Um, again, I, I wrote one of my favorite lyrics down from this song, which is begging for footnotes in the story of your life. I love the idea, again, well, I don't love the idea for her if it's an autobiographical song, but I like the idea of the story 
of someone being in this relationship and they're doing everything they can you know they're laying the date the table with like the fancy cutlery and shit and they are just doing everything for this person um wanting their love to be embraced but it's just being tolerated like it's just so savage similar to champagne problems on the flip side it's just a crushingly sad song and I feel like it's been a crushingly sad year for everyone um, that we can all just kind of relish and feel our feels with this song. Um, and yeah, beginning and begging for footnotes in the story of your life. Come on, that's so good. These aren't even songs at this point, they're like fucking short stories. Gold Rush is the next song. And again, I really like Gold Rush. I do feel like consistency wise ever more has more consistency maybe i prefer folklore because of the the nostalgia almost attached to it being like a surprise record mid-year when you've got covid going on just like no one was having it this year and then we got like that surprise record and it was just like something that kind of cheered us all up old rush is the next one it has a really poppy upbeat kind of intro to it and, and just feel to it um throughout the song um, so it makes it stand out, you know, sonically. I like that this song references folklore, maybe not the album per se, but like actual folklore. And this one again is telling a story of a girl who's possibly fallen in love with the guy that everyone is trying to get with, you know, the rich, attractive, wealthy guy. Um, but she almost doesn't want to be a part of it. She doesn't want to follow what everyone else is doing because uh, she doesn't want the gold rush. However, she can't help it. Nobody, no crime featuring Pam, Haim. You'll have to correct me on that one. If I look a bit red, it's because I'm sitting right next to my radiator and I've got it on full blast. That's a choice and we're just gonna have to stick with it. Nobody, no crime is my favorite song on this record, is my favorite Taylor Swift song ever. This is, this song, it takes you on a journey. It starts off similar to the other songs where it's telling a story, would you believe, about someone who is in this relationship um, and they think that their significant other is cheating on them. And the, the whole kind of goal is that they want to find out. They want the proof. There's nobody, no crime. There's no proof. There's no crime. Um, so it starts off kind of lighthearted, right? Esther, Este, I forget. I've got it written down, I can't remember exactly how it's pronounced, is the wife in question. So she is convinced that her husband is cheating on her. She doesn't smell, that, that that's not her Merlot on his mouth. That's not my jewelry on our joint account. Like again, just fantastic storytelling woven in with this sonically really nice, cohesive sounding song. And then it takes a very sharp twist halfway through when it appears that Este actually, Esther, I feel like I'm saying her name wrong, actually disappears. Um, and her husband, who she thinks was cheating on her, has new tires. Um, and now the song kind of switches to Esther's friend, who I guess is Taylor in this instance, who is trying to prove that he did it. And I just really like how gripping it is and how um, kind of gothic and melodramatic it is. Um, it feels like a film for your ears. You can really lose yourself in it. And the hooks, I think he did it, but I just can't prove it. Nobody, no crime. It just has that kind of bluesy folk feel to it. It's, it's almost like, rather than like the happy kind of folky music we've been listening to previously, it's a bit more grittier. It's got a bit more texture to it. And I just really, really like that song. Next up in the album, we take a dip with a few songs I don't love with Happiness and Dorothea, although both sweet songs, especially Happiness, I really like the lyrics in this one. Dorothea is a nice song as well. It has a really beautiful piano intro that got me interested, but kind of lost me with both the lyrics and the sound. Coney Island is the next track uh, featuring The National. Again, one I didn't love. Consistent theme of loss in a relationship, kind of getting a bit repetitive at this point. Ivy, however, brings me back and I uh, just fall in love with this this song every time I hear it. I love the hook on the chorus where she says, oh god damn, um, it's just so, it's just something that just gets stuck in your head and you just find yourself singing it all day long and it's, it, it's just a really, really fantastic song. This song is about the point of view of a widow 
who falls in love again after her husband dies and it's kind of the feeling of guilt and like should I let this happen like we're drinking my husband's alcohol we are in our house like my hand my is taken in his marriage like this is still wrong but she can't help but just embrace the the feelings that she feels when she's with this person and I, I just really like I like that um I like that aspect it's, it's again it's not really one that you hear of in modern storytelling uh, and songwriting I should say I feel like this album started off really strong with the first half and then for me in the second half it kind of ebbs and flows a little bit Cowboy Like Me and Long Story Short are the next two tracks um Cowboy Like Me has a nice acoustic kind of chilled out vibe I would definitely not skip it um it's just not one that I can recall straight away like oh that's that's a really good track on this record. Long story short is, would you believe, talking about the loss of a relationship um, and falling for the wrong guy. Um, originally, even now she's with someone else better, kind of telling this otherwise long story in a short story. Um, don't really see how this fits into the album because like the whole point of the other songs is that she doesn't make the long story short and that she just revels in all of the details of the other stories. So you don't want a short story from Taylor Swift in this record. You want her to go into all of the grittiness that she has been in the previous songs, um, like No Body, No Crime and Ivy, uh, Champagne Problems. So this one, I kind of felt like the consistency just went for me here, but I can forgive that because the next two tracks really do bring it back up. And they do that with Marjorie and Closure. Marjorie is a really sweet song, um, not about a, a romantic relationship, um, but talking about a loved one who has died and sort of recounting all these stories and advice that they got from them over their lives, which is someone, which is something that anyone who has experienced some kind of bereavement can relate to, even if it's like a pet, you can, you can relate to just wallowing in your feelings about all the little things they did and all the little stories they did and all the little stories they told and all the little moments that you have. Um, one of my favourite moments in the song is where um, she's saying that she wished that she'd asked more questions and that she should have written all the answers down and that she should have, you know, printed every single grocery store receipt um, that they had to offer them just because they didn't want to miss any part of their life because now they're gone, they're never going to ask them that. They're never going to get to know the answers to these questions which again is something that anyone who's experienced any kind of loss can relate to. It's just a deeply personal song um, and it's just relatable. And I, 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 it's definitely one of my favorites. Closure's a really, a, a kind of a badass song. I do like this one a lot. Um, closure is, is Taylor coming to terms with the fact that she doesn't need closure. Um, she doesn't want your closure almost. Um, breaking up with someone, receiving a letter from them, they're trying to explain and give closure and, and, and kind of explain their actions and what they did. But Taylor don't, she don't want it. Um, she's like, I don't need your closure. I got your light up. I am fine. And one of my favorite lyrics from this uh, song is when she describes um, herself and her relationship to this person as a wrinkle in your new life. Like this is something that you will just forget about in times to come. Um, I, I will just be a mere wrinkle a mere coffee stain uh, in your life and that is all I will be. And then it comes to the close of the album with the title track Evermore featuring the incredible Bon Iver who was on the first on the Folklore album. Um, this one I wasn't too sure um, lyrically what to interpret from it. I kind of got anecdotes of it being regarding like mental health and things like that but I wasn't sure but that's just kind of like my interpretation from it um I feel like a lot of these songs on this album are just like cut and dry with what they are whereas this one I like it's a bit more fluid you don't know necessarily exactly it's like it's not in your face what's trying to be um sung about and what's trying to be spoken about I feel like it's talking about mental health because Taylor is sort of um addressing that she thinks that this pain that she is in is going to be forever more. Um, she feels like she's being, you know, thrown around by the waves. And then at the end of the song, the conclusion is beautiful because she kind of realizes that this isn't going to be forever more. This is going to go um, and, you know, 
any pain or trauma, maybe not mental health, but just like trauma or like a bad experience in your life. Um, it's just kind of coming to terms with it and addressing it, um, addressing your inner demons kind of thing. Um, and I thought it was a nice way to end the song. And it's always nice when like the final song is the title track. I don't know why it just really puts like a nice bow on the album. Um, and that is Evermore. Um, I really like Evermore. Um, I have been listening to Folklore a lot more because um, she did this thing with Disney Plus where she like sung all of the songs live acoustic, which is just like, you just want that from your artist to just be able to sit down and just play all of their songs live and instrumentally three people in one room playing a whole album. There's something just so raw and appealing about that. So I would highly suggest you watch that if you, um, if you can. If you don't have Disney Plus, I don't know why, because like The Mandalorian's on there, so like you're missing out if you're not watching that. Um, this isn't a review about The Mandalorian, although it should have been. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that is this album. I really enjoy this album, and I do think, I feel like I'm gonna go back to it more than Folklore. I like the stories a bit more in this album. Um, I feel like maybe it is a more realized version of Folklore, um, although I do love both together. I kind of don't want to say one's better than the other just because they go so well together. Um, I would give this album like a four out of five. It's a really good album, possibly one of my favorites of the year. Um, but yeah, that is my review of Evermore. Um, let me know in the comments what you think of this album, what you think of Folklore. Fuck it, are we going to get a third album in this trilogy? That would be great. Um, just keep on making that music um, because it is definitely fantastic uh, and no one is complaining. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you in my next one. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, all that jazz. And uh, yeah, stay safe. And yes, I will see you in the new year.